sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he climbed the member. فَقَالَ آمين, آمين, آمين. And he said, Ameen, 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 Ameen three times. قِيلَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ It was said, O Messenger of Allah, إِنَّكَ حِينَ سَعِدْتَ الْمِنْبَرَ قُلْتَ آمين, آمين, آمين. Ya Rasulullah, we heard you, we saw you. When you climbed the member, you said Ameen three times. قَالَ إِنَّ جِبْرِيلَ أَثَانِي The Messenger وسلم, said, Jibreel alayhi salam came to me. فَقَالَ مَنْ أَدْرَكَ شَهْرَ رَمَضَانَ وَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهُ فَدَخَلَ النَّارِ that person who found the month of Ramadan but did not receive forgiveness, may they enter into the fire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distance that person. Jibreel alayhi salam said to me to say Ameen. So I said, فَقُلْتُ وَمَنْ أَدْرَكَ أَبَوَيْهِ أَوْ أَحَدَهُمَا فَلَمْ يَبَرَّهُمَا فَمَاتَ فَدَقَلَ النَّارَ فَأَبْعَدَهُ اللَّهُ قُلْ آمِينَ this is why we mentioned this hadith. Jibreel alayhi salam then said to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi for the second time, whoever found both of their parents or one of their parents and did not do good to them and then died and then enters Jahannam, Allah, may Allah distance that person from his mercy. Qul ameen, say ameen. Faqultu ameen, so I said ameen. Wa man dhukirtu. وَمَنْ ذُكِرْتَ عِنْدَهُ فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيْهِ فَمَاتَ فَدَخَلَ النَّارِ فَأَبْعَدَهُ اللَّهُ قُلْ آمِينَ فَقُلْتُ آمِينَ That person who hears your mention and does not make salat and salam the Lut Sharif upon you, does not pray, make dua for you, and then dies and then enters into Jahannam فَأَبْعَدَهُ اللَّهُ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distance that person from his mercy. قُلْ آمِينَ فَقُلْتُ آمِينَ Say Ameen. Jibreel alayhi salam said to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Say Ameen. So he said, I said Ameen. We may go, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to understand. What we were explaining last week, what we started off is, obviously, Adab al-Mufra, the beginning of Imam Muqadi's book, the first 40, 50, 45 hadiths or so are all about parents. It's the most important Adab that exists among human beings, and we've been talking about that. But in this narration, Right? The one thing that I want us to emphasize is, again, we make dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us during the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts, accept our dua, accept our ibadah, accept our worship, accept our prayers. Look, it's a fact. I'm not shaming anybody. I'm not judging anybody. We make dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who pray five times a day. We make us dua, may Allah make us people who take the Salah five times a day seriously, at home, at uh, work, at school, we are traveling, wherever we are going, we make dua. This is the most important thing, my brother and sister, this is not a reminder about Salah. Then, the other important parts of the deen that apply every day, things like halal consumption, things like a halal livelihood, things like providing halal for our family, these things are things that apply every day. Ramadan does not happen every day, Ramadan happens once a year, Hajj happens once a lifetime, Zakat happens once a year, the most important thing in our life, act of worship is Salah, right? And before Salah, we also have to know how to do wudu, how to do tahara, men and women. Right? We have to know what is halal, we have to know what is haram, and we also have to know how to recite the Qur'an correctly. These are the four things that I always say. These are the four things that everybody needs to know every day. We have to know tahara, we have to know wudu and ghusl, and tayammum and istinja, all of those things are in the section of tahara. We have to know Salah, we have to know how to pray Salah, we have to know the Fiqh, we have to know what is the Sunnah way of preparing the Salah, we have to know how to recite the Qur'an. We have to know Tajweed, we have to sit with the teacher, we have to sit with the Qari, we have to perfect and correct our recitation. And the fourth thing that we have to know, we have to know what is Halal al haram Not just about food, but also about income, about lifestyle. These are the four things that happen every day. Ramadan, fasting in Ramadan is once a year, Zakat, once a year obligation, Hajj, once in a lifetime obligation. And then all of the other different Things which Allah has made fard, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made fard. Parents, even parents, we may not have our parents, we may not live with our parents, right? But it's also fard for you as a son, right? You have to take care of your parents. You have to take care of your mother and father. All of that is there in the deen. What I want us to appreciate, inshallah, try to appreciate from this hadith is we understand that Ramadan is the time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives all of us the ability 
This is a miracle, this is a blessing, this is a special fadl and treasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even people who are not able to make it to the masjid outside of Ramadan, they make it to the masjid. And they make it to the masjid and they stay in the masjid longer. And there's no issue for them in doing so. There's no problem for them. In fact, they enjoy it. Right? We are not able to give sadaqah at other times throughout the year, but during Ramadan we give more sadaqah than we do at any other time throughout the entire year combined. Right? This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reward is there from Allah. That's one thing, but also we enjoy it. And we feel the hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of those rewards are there. This is the time for us, my brothers. This is the time for us. This is what the Sahaba radiallahu used to prepare all year for, this opportunity of Ramadan. We make Allah not allow us to waste it. People that don't show up during the month of Ramadan, they are here, right? Even people that are not the best with regards to their salah, praying five times a day, alhamdulillah, may Allah make us all people, right? During Ramadan, that's not even an issue either. During Ramadan, everybody's praying Fajr on time, everybody is praying all of their other salahs on time. All right, subhanAllah, this is a good thing, right? And the goal should be, inshallah, I stay punctual after Ramadan as well, but we can talk about that later on. The point that I want to make is that we understand that Ramadan is an important time. The entire Ummah understands that Ramadan is an important time. Even people who are not fasting, right? The books of fiqh say that if you are not fasting, you have an excuse not to fast, right? You should still not eat publicly in front of people, right? You should eat, you know, away from people. You know, my, again, I give the example of my nani, my grandmother, she we 90 years old now, she's been giving sadaqah every year for a long time because she's weak and she's old, right? But you know, we don't see her eating at the same time as everybody else, right? She has her meals, she takes her medicine, she does what she's able to do, right? Even if a person is not fasting, right? There is a level of adab and respect for Ramadan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in the heart of everybody who says, La ilaha illallah. So if that makes sense, if we can understand that, if we can appreciate that, right? And then look even more closely. We have Qiyam, we have Iftar. These are the best times to make Dua, right? These are the best times to share food. And then we have Itikaf. The Prophet ﷺ literally used to camp inside the Masjid. Then we have Laylatul Qadr, better than a thousand months. All of these things all at one time, all at one moment during the month of Ramadan, right? And no one complains, <laughs> no one complains. Alhamdulillah, now Ramadan, the fasting is outside of the summer, it's in the spring, so the days are going to get shorter and shorter for the next 30 years or so. The overall point that I'm trying to make is that everybody understands and everybody's iman strengthens, everybody's love for Allah increases, love for the masjid, love for the Qur'an, love for sadaqah, love for the ummah increases during the month of Ramadan. We all know this. If that makes sense, Right? The significant thing for us in this narration, in this hadith, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam to literally ask the Prophet ﷺ to say Ameen to these three curses, these three baddua. If you and me, we understand the significance of Ramadan, it's going to start this week. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying, and there's many, many other hadith about Ramadan that we have been hearing and we will continue hearing for the next couple of weeks in Jummah and beyond. Ramadan is the month of forgiveness, Ramadan is the month of mercy, Ramadan is the month of rahmah and maghfirah, Ramadan is the month of guaranteeing your salvation, freedom from Jahannam, Ramadan is the month of all of these things, right? It's the month of the Qur'an, it's the month in which the Prophet ﷺ was more generous than every other time outside of Ramadan, right? The unfortunate person, the Prophet ﷺ is being told in this hadith, a person who is truly deprived, mahroom, right? Right? truly deprived, truly mahroom, deprived, is that person who finds Ramadan, all of this bonus from Allah, all of this extra reward from Allah, all of this khair, everybody else in your family, everybody else in your community, everybody else in the ummah is on an iman high, is on a spiritual rush, is in the strongest state of ibadah, and Iman and worship and love for Allah, love for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, love for the Ummah, love for La Ilaha, love for the House of Allah, love for the Book of Allah, love for all of these things is the highest as it is during the month of Ramadan. But still for some reason we do not receive Allah's forgiveness. We do not receive maghfirah from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's truly an unfortunate. What happened? 
What was I doing? Right? It's raining. Right? Right? Do Allah give us good weather? Alhamdulillah, rain is not a bad thing, right? Sometimes, right? It makes things a little bit... We have to adjust things in our day and in our schedule, right? But the analogy is quite simple. It's raining. And it's raining hard. Okay? And it's raining so hard, you step outside your house for 10 seconds. Right? You get soaked. You get wet. Right? Think of that with Ramadan and Allah's mercy and Allah's forgiveness and the barakat and the rahmat and the maghfirah and the forgiveness. But for some reason, at that time, we put up our umbrella. We are not taking from all of this. Right? The opportunity for sadaqah, the reward is multiplied, is there. The opportunity for feeding a fasting person is there. Listening to the Qur'an, reciting the Qur'an, etika, right? all of these things are there. But it comes and then it goes and it passes by. And subhanAllah, again, I'm emphasizing this. Before we know it, Ramadan will be here. Shaban is an opportunity for us to practice fasting. Before we know it, 10 days. Before we know it, 15 days. And then 20 days, the last 10 days. And then subhanAllah, Eid will be here. Right, the programs that the masjid is putting together, right? This is an opportunity for us, right? To really strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not possible outside of Ramadan in the same way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it such. It is a miracle, it is a blessing. Despite all of that, you and me, because of laziness, or because of not preparing, or because of you know not having a plan with our family, or not having a plan with our masjid, or Whoever else we're going to spend Ramadan with, the Ramadan starts and comes and then goes. <coughs> right? This is really bad. <laughs> the Rasulullah is saying, he's having this conversation with Jibreel alayhi salam. Jibreel alayhi salam is saying, like, this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. It's for free, right? We're not even talking about you have to give so much in sadaqah, right? We mentioned the hadith in the Jummah khutbah on Friday that Prophet said, whoever gives iftar to a fasting person, that person will receive the reward eating, the person feeding will receive the reward of the person eating, both of them will receive each other's reward and neither of their reward will be decreased. It's just double, it's just win-win. Right? And the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, they responded that, Ya Rasulullah, All of us are not able to afford, you know, mashallah, the masjid does an excellent job, right? Please support, please sign up if you are interested, right? But not everybody is able to support a couple hundreds of dollars. Right, towards uh, iftar set up like this, right? The Prophet said it's okay. Right? One date, one sip of water, one sip of milk, you get the full reward. Even the same as if you were to cater from a restaurant, Oak Tree Road or whatever. Right? So that's there. You and me, what excuse do we have? I have to ask myself. And hopefully I don't have to give this answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What excuse do we have? What is more important at this time? 11 months of the year, okay, we balance deen and dunya. But during the month of Ramadan, we give more preference to deen. In a way that we don't give outside of Ramadan. This is what it is there for. This is our opportunity to recharge. Right? IT people, right? Mashallah, my basic brothers and sisters. Okay, what is safe mode? Safe mode, kis What is safe mode? Safe mode? Okay. Safe mode, right? You boot your computer, it doesn't boot properly, it doesn't start up properly. I'm not saying this properly, but you understand the example, right? And the computer says there's a problem, all right? So something happened, too much going on, the computer crashed, okay? Now it boots, right? You don't have access to all of the different types of programs that are there. Safe mode means you start the computer with minimum amount of background processes, background stuff going on. Literally, you can just do the basics and you have to kind of then figure out what went wrong. Right? The worst thing to do is figure out somebody else's code. Right? It's a really, really difficult thing to do. But once you go into safe mode, then you can find out what the problem was, where the system crashed, and then you know the system works properly again. Ramadan is like your and my safe mode. So many other things Eventually we get to a point where we get distracted. We're not able to make time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Safe mode is we cut out all of the other things. You cut out all of the other things, right? We focus on the most important things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Allah loves when we pray salah to Him more. Allah loves when we recite Quran more. Allah loves when we sacrifice from our time and our wealth more. And this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. Bring these habits back into our life and then after Ramadan, inshallah, continue with these habits, right? The masjid taking care, doing khidmat of people, 
right? And the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, these are the things that are the most important parts of our deen. The Prophet sallallahu is being told by Jibreel alayhi salam that look, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. Someone who doesn't take from this big deal, who doesn't think of it as a big deal, doesn't take this seriously, then it's a truly unfortunate person. Bishak, without a doubt, is truly mahrum and deprived person. What excuse did we have? How we're supposed to get rid of everything else in our life and give as much time to the masjid as possible, give as much time to the Quran as possible, give as much time to our family and to the people that we need to serve as possible. What else were you doing? What else were you doing? Okay, I'm not saying don't go on vacation and everybody has to go for a tikaf. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that this is a time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give to everybody. We know that. We need to accept that. And Allah has given it to you and me. We need to properly value it. And with that same understanding, that same level of azamah and reverence, respect that we have for the month of Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions the parents. The Jibreel alayhi wa sallam, he mentions the parents. You are in my parents. Think about how important Ramadan is, how seriously we take Ramadan and you're in my life. Right? Ramadan is the most important time of the year. We're saying this over and over and over again. Right? In the same hadith, in the same moment, Jibreel alayhi salam is telling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Okay, outside of Ramadan, okay, we don't have the same blessings as inside of Ramadan. We still have our parents. Right? May Allah bless and protect those of us who still have our parents. One of them or both of them. We still have our parents. Your parents are still alive. Do their khidmah. Earn their dua. Okay? Bardasht. Hilm. Tolerated. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. This can be your ticket to Jannah. Ramadan is our ticket to Jannah. May Allah make it so. But with that same energy, with that same level of respect, with that same level of adab and manner, with that same level of importance, Jibreel alayhi salam is saying, you have your parents, one of them or both of them, just by doing their khidmah, just by earning their du'as, you can go to Jannah. But you didn't. Your sins, you could have haven't forgiven. Yes, go to the masjid. Pray your salah with jama'at. Do good deeds, right? But a good deed that is also a source of forgiveness and maqfira is what? Being good to your parents. Being good to your parents. We don't think of that as ibadah. We don't think of that as worship. We think of tilawah with the Quran and dhikr and uh, sadaqah and salah and you know itikaf and fast. And we think of these things as ibadah. No. Taking care of your parents, this is an ibadah. Allah will forgive your sins. And Jibreel alayhi salam is confirming that if you had this opportunity, you had this blessing, you had the blessing of parents for a short period of time or for an extended period of time, one or both of them, but your sins, you were not able to have it forgiven because of this blessing, then that's also really, really bad. Really, really upsetting. Really, really unfortunate situation to be in. May Allah protect us. Right? And the last thing is, okay, even if we don't have the month of Ramadan, even if we don't have our parents, right? The person that we are commanded to love more than everybody else is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? And that doesn't mean we have to go to Medina Manawara all the time. That doesn't mean we have to name all of our children Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's not a bad thing. Right? It's the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's not what Allah has commanded us to do. Right? What has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do? In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima. Right? We have to just make this level of dua for him. That's the starting of our relationship with the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is Allah's chosen one. Him and the angels, they do salat and salam on the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We can't say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? When we hear it, when we read it, when we see it, when we text it, we write Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? That is in the same category as your parents in the category of Ramadan. Whoever does not show this level, this level of respect for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi you can't even say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You and me don't go to Jannah without having Muhammad Rasulullah after La ilaha illallah. Right? Our Iman is not complete without Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah means what? There's no God worthy of worship but Allah. How do we worship Allah? Muhammad Rasulullah. And all we are commanded to do is just have some adab, have some respect. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
I may go, may Allah give me and all of us the tawfiq, inshallah, to benefit from the month of Ramadan. May Allah bless and protect our parents. May Allah increase us in our love for the sunnah, in our love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah make this Ramadan better than all of our previous years of Ramadan. We may dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all so much tawfiq. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim. Wa ala ala Ibrahim inna kahmidun majeed. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. إنك حميد مجيد اللهم لك الحمد كما أنت أهله اللهم لك الشكر كما أنت أهله إنك أهل التقوى وأهل المغفرة اللهم عيني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وعليك بلا ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين سبحان ربي رب العزة عما يصفون السلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين. So inshallah.